Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another live q and I'm Mark Holthy, Canadian Immigration Lawyer, and this is the Canada Immigration Live. So today we've got a couple little announcements, but really this is all about you. We're going to get right into it, answering your questions, so start posting them. And uh, this one is just going live to YouTube today. So those in Facebook land and, and, uh, and Twitter and LinkedIn land, um, it's just streaming live to YouTube. So they, the people that are here, I appreciate you joining me. But so start dropping those questions now. All right. So what do we know? What's news? What, what's coming up? Well, will today be the day when express entry drops below the 500 threshold? We will see in just a short while. We expect that round of invitations to be released here uh, probably within at least two hours. It seems to be the pattern. So we'll see if that happens. Um, What else is new? Well, we know that the grandparent program, there was just recently an announcement made about that, that they are going to start extending more notifications of interest. Well, let me flip over here to the website, see if I can pull this up for you guys. So you can see this is the announcement right here, but it's not good for new people. It's not adding anything new. If you're looking to um, uh, sponsor a parent or grandparent through this program, because you can see here that this week, IRCC will be sending invitations to apply to 23,100 interested potential sponsors. And they think that will give them enough to make sure that they receive their goal of 15,000. So over the, over the course of the next two weeks. But the reality is, because they've had so much interest way back in 2020, they're actually not opening it up for anyone to express a new interest in sponsoring a parent to become a permanent resident of Canada. And so you can see here that um, this time they're going to take the same approach as 2021. Anyone who submitted an interest to sponsor form in 2020, but who did not receive an ITA um, in January or September is encouraged to check their email account because that's who they're targeting. So Yes, it's kind of crappy for people. I, I'm really frustrated with immigration, I'll be honest, why they are making it so bloody difficult uh, to sponsor a parent or grandparent. But hey, we'll leave it where it is because, hey, that's immigration. They can do whatever the heck they want. Okay, let's see who's tuned in here. Let's give some shout outs. Cecilia, good to see you. Great to have you connecting in. We've got Erfin who is here. Hello to you. Make sure you post in the comments below where you're tuning in from. Um, and, uh, cause I want to give you guys a shout out. I absolutely do. Now, for those of you who are watching this for the first time, I am an immigration lawyer. I'm based in Lethbridge, Alberta. I have lawyers within my firm, Holthy Immigration Law that are stretched across the country. I've got Cedric and Chanel who are over in Ontario. Alicia and I are in Alberta. And so we've got four lawyers within our firm and these live Q and A's are, are our way of giving back to you. So those who take the time, who join us, who post a comment, have a really good chance of me actually getting to it and answering it. So that's the nature of the live Q&A. And how many people do this? Very few. Why? Well, you have to know your stuff. And if you are getting questions about a wide variety of topics within immigration, there's no hiding the fact that you don't know squat. Unless you know your stuff, there's no way you can just pull a comment on and hope to be able to answer it. So Obviously, the lawyers who do these live streams within our firm, we know our stuff. And we don't do free consultations. We don't. We charge for our consults. But the way we give back to the world, literally, is through these live Q&As. Because when we answer your question, there are thousands of other people who will benefit from that same answer. Now, the reality is YouTube and the algorithms are not always friends of live Q&A. So if you like this, please subscribe to the channel. Please tell your friends about it. And we're also going to maybe toy a little bit with start times. And right now, 10 a.m. Mountain Time is when I've done this for a long time now. Probably the last two, three years. Alicia's tomorrow starts at 11. Cedric's been going at weird times because he's over in another time zone. So we're all of these are here to help you guys and support you. But remember, we are immigration lawyers. And if you have any Canadian immigration matter, including refusals or difficult situations, book a consult because we can help. And when you hear this little triangle sound, that is your signal that your question is really a legal question 
that requires a whole bunch more information for me to provide legal advice. So some of you will be wondering, Mark, why are you not getting my question? Why are you not answering my question? Well, the reality is if it's so specific that you are the only one that that information could apply to, then it's going to be that. And I'll recommend that you slide over to our website right over here and click on speak to a lawyer. All right. Okay. One other little shout out before we jump in here. I want to let you guys know that the next Express Entry Masterclass is actually starting at a new time. So some people have had trouble <clears throat> because I've been doing it, <clears throat> excuse me, at 4 p.m. Mountain Time in the evenings. And so they're not always available. Some people want to watch, you know, while they're at work or where they're, you know, during the day. So I've decided to do the classes at 8 a.m. Um, Mountain Time from October the 24th to the 27th. So stay tuned for that because that is uh, the next little thing. And all you have to do is just click over on our Canadian Immigration Institute site and you'll have the ability to track down all of the courses that we have. And I want to point out that just next week, if you are someone or you know someone who's looking to sponsor a spouse, I am doing the Spousal Sponsorship Masterclass that starts October the 17th and the cart for that is open. For consultants, there's CPD accreditation for all of this. So head on over there and check that out. Okay, let's see who else we got here. <clears throat> and let's get to some more questions. And while you're watching these lives, don't hesitate to tell your friends, hey, Mark is live. Come on over and join us. Obviously, the more people that I can get watching these, it just amplifies the message and I'm able to help more people. And that is the goal. Okay, let's see who else we've got here. Um, see people. So we've got Ozan who's here. Good to see you. Um, Prize says, thank you so much for your time and live videos. We'll appreciate above questions. We will definitely get to the questions here. Uh, Prabhat from Nepal. Hello. Nasura, good to see you. Uh, a graduate of the Canadian Immigration Institute. So the Express Entry course. Great to see you, Nasura. Excellent, excellent. And let's see who else we have here. We've got a bunch, a bunch of people that are tuning in. Uh, let's see. We've got, oh, we've got Sophie all the way over in Kenya. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Emanuela is over in Ghana. Wow, we've got two people from Africa. That's awesome. Who else do we have here? We've got Vivek, uh, London, Ontario. Uh, Lois is also in Kenya. Very cool. I love this. Okay, Vas is chatting from the greatest black nation, Nigeria. Greetings to you and thanks for sharing your knowledge. Wow, this is, Africa is taking over. Very, very cool. Okay, uh, we've got Rashid is over in London. Hello, Rashid. Good to see you. And as always, we've got Reshmi with a super chat. Okay, let's hit Reshmi here. Reshmi says, um, Okay, okay. Uh, would there be a problem with the people who received no notice of, uh, of interest from Ontario once Bill C-19 comes into play? What is the processing time for PNPs after ITA? Well, all of this, Reshmi, is available on the government site. So anytime you have any questions about processing times, I go here. I type in IRCC processing times and understand after the ITA when it comes to express entry, you can look here, and I, that reminds me of something. I've got some really good news I want to share with you guys. If you look here for CEC, if you're in Canada, you check the processing times. Right here, you can see it says economic immigration, 17 months. Okay, so 17 months is what it is. So economic immigration. And if you go to the federal skilled worker right here, and you click on it, it says 26 months. But I'll let you guys in on a little secret. So right here, let's also go to um, economic immigration and then let's go to provincial nominees and then let's go to express entry provincial nominees, which is one that I've got right now. You can say it says right here, 15 months. But the interesting thing I want to tell you guys is that I just met with a client this morning and he retained me to help him with his express entry and it took... Right there. <laughs> it took three months to get his approval. That's it. So this says here, 15 months for a PNP based nomination through Express Entry. Well, my client, it took him three months, you guys. So immigration's figuring things out. And I have no doubt that, and you can see this was just updated today, October the 12th. So 15 months is what they say. So they're definitely overshooting. And that's extremely good news. 
So for you, um, Reshmi, it's entirely possible that it will come through very quickly. Very, very likely. Okay, let's see. We've got Alva. Good to see you. We've got, who else do we have here? Oh, no way. Shihan, are you serious? This is Bastion. Bastion, last week I was in Dawson Creek. Where do you work? Where are you working? Because I was actually in Dawson Creek. I spent the week <clears throat> up at my, my cousin's up north um, and they live on the Alberta side. So uh, Bastion, that's hilarious. So let me know. Make sure you post in the comments. I want to know where you are, um, uh, where you're working. Because maybe I went to the same place you're at. Who knows? Okay. Ayan, good to see you. <clears throat> Let's see who else. Um, neutral says that's a miracle. Yeah. So things are improving. Things are getting better. Okay, let's jump back. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I'm gonna I'm gonna jump into just a couple other things here. All right, so let's jump into. Okay, so Cecilia says uh, from India. I have ten years of experience <clears throat> as a caregiver. Kindly guide me. How can I immigrate, or which agency should I apply to? So this is a classic one where I ring the bell, and then I say, Cecilia, go to our website. Go here immediately click on speak to a lawyer and then schedule a consultation with whichever lawyer you can get in to see the fastest. So wherever there's openings. And so if you click on me for a 25 minute consult, you can see I don't have any opening today. For tomorrow, I've got appointments in the afternoon and then Friday is completely open. So there's options there for you and uh, that's what I recommend. So <clears throat> so Cecilia, anyone who's looking at direction and wants advice on strategy, which is really important because there's nothing worse than saying, oh, I want to do this option. And you, that's all you know about. You research about it. And that's the process you're, that's the horse that you're backing in the horse race. This one option. Well, in my consultations with my clients, we explore everything. And there may be things that you never even thought of that come up in the consult. And the reason I can't give you specific legal advice as to what direction you should go, Cecilia, is because <clears throat> I need more facts. I need more information. <clears throat> Excuse me. I got a scratchy throat. And as people give me more information and I ask more detailed questions, that's when the options really start to expand and I can really give good, good advice. So that's what you do, Cecilia. Head over there and do that right now. Okay. Irfan says... <coughs> Excuse me, really scratch your throat. Irfan says, I've applied to tier to peer and still waiting for any updates. Right now I live in Quebec, but I have a lease for the January 1st to move to Vancouver. Is that enough to show intention of leaving Quebec? Um, <clears throat> Irfan, the only way that I tell people as far as intention is to move. There is no reason for you to stay in Quebec if you want to go through the tier to peer pathway. In fact, if they know you live there, you can unravel your whole process because unless you've actually moved, just because you've got a lease agreement somewhere means nothing to immigration um, <clears throat> if you've continued to live in Quebec even after you submitted your application. So move. That's my advice to you, Irfan, is move. Don't wait. Okay, Salma says, I, I worked online for a research and development job in my home country while I was studying on a study permit in Canada. Can I claim foreign work experience for that in CRS score? Yeah, you can. If it meets the requirements, you can count that as foreign work experience. Mm-hmm. As long as you meet the requirements <clears throat> and as long as you set it up correctly, Salma, in your, in your profile, um, as long as you explain clearly that it's online work, then, um, then yes, it is possible to claim that remote work experience. That's for a company that's outside of Canada that you're doing virtually. You can, it's, it's not always easy because you have to document it extremely well. You can't, you can't um, be light, I guess, is a, guess, a good way to describe it. You can't be light on the evidence. You have to really work hard and make sure that you have um, very, very clear, um, <clears throat> very clear evidence to support that, uh, that you actually performed the work that you said you did. Okay, <clears throat> uh, Leah says, do you need to provide a T4 along with work reference letters for CEC? Well, one of the things that I teach my clients all the time and those who attend my express entry course right here, we have a list of documents that are essential. And, excuse me, we have a list of documents that are, well, they're optional. And a T4 is definitely optional for the purposes of Canada. But what better way to prove that you actually worked, right? What better way to prove than if you, if you include your T4? 
So it's a mandatory requirement. It's a statement of remuneration uh, paid and what you ha- what has been remitted to the government. So when it says, um, you know, T4, you'll see within the express entry, it doesn't actually, you know, specifically make that a mandatory requirement, but I include it. Well, heck, even pay slips are not specifically required, but those are things that I teach my students in the express entry course. Um, and I, I, that's what I teach them that it's important to include a, a solid reference letter as well as making sure that um, if you have pay slips that you include those and if you're in Canada, T4. So short answer, Leah, yeah. All right, let's see here. I think we got another super here and Reshmi's back. Okay, um, Reshmi says, what kind of changes are permitted to the Express Energy Profile after getting nominated from Ontario and before the ITA? Well, I personally don't like to change a bloody thing and that's the truth. I, if, if people have to make changes um, between that period of time, there's you know a, a wide variety of circumstances, Reshmi, and I recommend that you book a consult and we can look at your specific situation because every person is different and the programs, depending upon which you're drawn through, um, those also impact on what changes can happen and what can't. So that's a really open-ended question and I need a whole lot more information. I recommend you book a consult, Reshmi. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Who's next? Okay, um, so Pri says, in Canada, worked online for a job in Iran. In my last work permit application form, I forgot to mention it. Now I want to mention it in my visa application form and later bring it in my pure option. Can I? Oh, Pri, this is one of the hardest things to do um, because you basically didn't disclose it initially. And now you're saying, voila, I've got this work experience. And it's not easy proving work experience, let alone in Iran. And so I think you've got a really, really tough, tough road, you know, as we say here in Southern Alberta, a tough road to hoe, essentially, uh, you know, a a reference to gardening. (laughs) You've got a tough process. It's possible if you do it correctly, you have to fully disclose, explain that you omitted it, that you forgot it. But you have to be very, very careful in how you do it. If you do it correctly, it's possible. And, uh, you know, this is something, I'll be honest, Pri, that we work with our clients all the time. So, yeah, if, if you dive in, it's possible, but you need to disclose the omission, which could trigger misrepresentation. Yeah, you have to be so, so careful. Okay, let's see here. Next, who is up? Okay, we've got Monsoon, who's up. Uh, monsoon winter number one. <laughs> hey, Mark, I got my PR a few days ago, man. <gasps> oh, <Yay>! applause. <laughs> I owe it up to you, man. How can I get my family here, Mark? I have a mom, dad, and sisters right here, my friend. Monsoon, now that you're a permanent resident, slide over and book a consultation with one of the lawyers in the firm, myself or one of the other one of the other crew the, of awesome lawyers that we have in the firm. Slide over here and book a consult and let's look at things in detail, okay? That's the best thing that you can do. Okay, um, okay, Manuela says, how long does it take to get your passport request from IRCC after you passed a medical exam for a Canadian study visa? That is a loaded question because it depends on the country. If it's India, there's a gazillion people applying, so it takes longer for sure. And in some instances, I've seen people sit for months waiting for their passport back. So it really depends, Manuela, on the country and um, and the, the, the time that you're submitting it. So right now, people are waiting to get their Uh, results back so they can start in January. Um, Usually immigration is mindful of that and they tend to do things a little bit faster than say, you know, the end of the spring when they know that the whole summer is there, things tend to slow down a little bit, but there's a higher volume. And so it really depends, Manuel, on where you're at. Okay, Mariana, good to see you. Joining from Toronto. When do you think CC processing will go back to six months processing? The processing times are going up by a year almost every month. There you go, Mariana. So, Three months, three months. And guess what? That client is going to join Alicia and myself tomorrow at at 11 a.m. Mountain Time as a guest to talk about his success. So three months, that's how long it took to get his CEC-based BCPNP international graduate through Express Entry. We filed it in July and he literally got his approval letter his approval email um, with the with the uh, with the request to submit uh, an email address to complete the landing, he got it yesterday. Crazy. Okay. Um, okay. Samantha says I added my spouse after Coper. How long until second passport request? Ugh. Once again, 
country specific, visa office specific. I've seen those things take months and months. I had one client who sat for over four months waiting for even acknowledgement and his his original um, uh, COPER expired. The passport, you know, the, the permanent resident visa in his, his passport had expired by that time. And, you know, he was really, really nervous. Now he's a permanent resident, but it took over four months. So it really depends on the country. Uh, Sophie, yes, Kenya, good to see you. And let's see here who else we've got. Next question. Okay. Um, yes. So, yes, we got Va there from Nigeria. Okay. Amara says, hi, Mark. Uh, my son deceased in July. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Oh, that's terrible. Um, and my visa decision yet to receive. What can one do to urge IRCC to process an application? Can one complain to the IRCC minister for a lack of decision? Um, Oh, that's so sad. Um, no, there isn't really a way to complain. Everybody's treated equally poorly, Amara. Uh, my heart goes out to you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> LGH says, hey, Mark, if I claim foreign work experience for a CEC application, must the experience be in the same NOC code? They are all in tier A, but not the same code. If you have the Canadian experience class, you've met the eligibility, which is one year of skilled work experience, skill level B, A or O, and you have the language and you've, you've got that work experience within the past three years, then you're in the pool. When it comes to the comprehensive ranking system, then you can pull work experience in whatever way you want, as long as it's skilled. It doesn't have to be A, it could be B, it could be zero. Um, and doesn't even have to be continuous because you're qualified through CEC and only continuous employment applies to the Federal Skilled Worker Program. And so there's no issues. Now, obviously, LGH, I recommend, as I do with all of you guys, that you consider booking consult because we can dive right into your specific situation and then there's no doubt, right? And it's hard for me to assess everything um, specifically like this when you say, this is my situation, give me personal advice, right? So in your situation here, just to keep it global and big picture, yeah, once you meet the eligibility for CEC, you can pull foreign work experience um, uh, that's not in the same knock as your primary knock. You can. Yep. Okay. Okay, Vivek says, I've got three years of international experience in which one year is self-employed, worked with my father, in which I'm a partner. In that one year, I've worked four months, two jobs. Will this be a problem? Okay, so Vivek, anytime we have family businesses, immigration, just by its very nature, is going to question whether or not that's legitimate. You know, and when it comes to self-employed work, well, there are steps that you can do to, to prove that and to satisfy that, but it is not easy. It takes a lot of work. It really does. And, um, and uh, you know, we talk about this a lot in the Express Entry course, which is starting in a week or so. I strongly encourage you guys to consider um, subscribing and joining because there are four hours of masterclass. And for those of you who are over in India or another part of the world, with the classes starting for the express entry course, they are starting at 8 a.m. in the morning mountain time, which is 7 a.m. BC, and it's 10 a.m. in Ontario, 11 a.m. in, uh, in you know, the Maritimes. But over in India, that's about what, 8.30 p.m., so it's a, a really good time. So I'm shifting that up for express entry, and I think that will be a lot of fun. So I strongly encourage you guys to click on the link below in the description and join in. Okay, let's see. What do we got next here? Um, okay, Fabio says, visitor record was approved and mailed, but my two last names are switched around because I made a mistake on the immigration form. Should I amend or rather wait for my new postcard work for an extension that has correct last name? Ah, Fabio, I recommend you book a consult. We need to take a look at it carefully to see exactly what was done. And then from there, I can probably give you some specific advice on how you personally can fix that situation. It's so hard, right? Like even for myself, I love the model that we use within our firm. I just absolutely love it. And if you go to our firm, you'll see that how we represent people is just a little bit different. We've got a bunch of different stuff here for you, a lot more information. The website's expanding every day. But if we go here to About Us and our approach, you'll see this review, this, this collaborative review that we, approach that we do, it's specifically designed to combat your situation, Fabio. And when we go through the documents together, both you and I via a Zoom screen share, and we look at every single question that form together, who does that, okay? Of those, all the representatives out there, who does that? Like virtually none of them do. But when we go through it together on through a, a Zoom, it takes longer. I don't, I'm not as profitable. I don't make as much money as if I had 
15 paralegals that you guys only talked to them and didn't talk to me. That would be way more lucrative. You know, I know because I had firms in the past that did it, but I refuse to submit an application that is not as perfect as I can possibly make it. And so when we work together through this collaborative review approach, we work hand in hand to make sure that there is absolutely no mistakes. I encourage you to go over here, watch the little video that explains it, and you'll see the difference in the model that we use compared to even doing it on your own. Because two eyes are always better than one. And in the case of what we do, four eyes are always better than two. All right. Thanks for the question, Fabio. All right. Um, let's see here. Okay. Salma says, worked online from Canada for a job in another country for getting foreign work experience points. Is a pay stub and job letter enough? Or they may ask for bank statements and email communication proofs. Salma, once again, that's one of these triangle ones. When you're proving work experience, the officers have to have the ability to vet and determine if that company actually exists. So your answer to your question is dependent upon a number of factors. One is how big is the company? How out they? How out there? You know, are they in 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 you know in in like is their website visible? You know, are they a known company? Are they just small? Is it is it your own self employed business where you've got a partner? You know, there's all these things play a role in terms of what is enough. Now, from the simple standpoint of express entry, a reference letter and pay stubs is, you know, is, is what they look for. Right. And, but if they have trouble verifying that the company exists from the letter, then that can be a problem. And then we will sometimes go to other links or if your pay stubs look fake, you know, sometimes payroll in, in India, for example, sometimes those pay slips look kind of goofy, you know, heck, even the birth certificates that are generated sometimes look weird. And so anything that doesn't look legit, and that's where I put on my you know, my immigration officer glasses <laughs> when I'm going through an application and I'm like, hmm, if I was an officer, which I was in a previous life, would that document look legit? And if it doesn't, then I have discussions with my clients. Okay, we might need to put more information in, but it's such a, an intimate individual process where we drill down super, super far and you'll talk with, you know, you'll see tomorrow in the live with Alicia when we bring the client on and to talk about the experience, but no stone goes unturned. Okay. Uh, Ninu says, Hey Mark, I haven't received my extended 18 month post-grad permit for round two. I've also received PR ITA. My permit expires in December. Can I apply manually for both post-grad and the bridging open work permit? Well, you can, you know, one of them is going to win, right? Um, obviously the, the, if you haven't received it, maybe there's some kind of a problem and I definitely don't wait. Right. And that's why I created the course, you guys. Once again, what other courses do I have? If you go here, you'll see that I have the, um, let's see if we can just jump up this one right here. So this one is still there. It's still operating. You can click right here on the link when you go to the Canadian Immigration Institute site. And, um, and this course for $197 will walk you through the whole process of applying for it right the first time. So check that one out, Ninu. Understand that that course is there to help you with that new 18-month post-grad work permit. So go check that one out. All right. But yeah, there's no nothing stopping you. But which one is going to win, right? Which one is going to win? Is it going to be the post-grad or is it going to be the bridging open work permit? So um, it just depends. And if you get your, so you received your ITA, well, one thing I'd encourage you to do is to, is to subscribe to the course. Join me. And, the, you know, we can dive deeper into your specific situation for sure, Nino. But I recommend that you click on the link below and actually join me in the course that's starting on October the 24th. But you can start getting and accessing the materials right now. So head on over here and do that. And I uh, look forward to seeing you in our private group um, that is associated, that community group that's associated with that particular course. But congratulations. Oh, Sajad, it is so good to see you. Another another alumni of this sucker right here. I love it when you guys connect in. Sajad, I'm not sure if you're still around after posting it. He says, he always says, nice to see you. And I'm not sure if you're still around, but I'd love to get your thoughts on the course. Was it worth it? Really? That's what it comes down to, Sajad. So if you can do that or anyway, any of my alumni who are, t who are here watching these lives, I love when you guys come back to say hello. Um, definitely go and uh, let me know if, if, you know, your experience with that express entry. I had some... Um, uh, some testimonials associated with this before, um, but we made some changes to the website. So love to hear your your thoughts, Sajad. Okay, um, 
Let's see here what's next. Okay. I don't know if Shihan has responded. Let's see if Shihan has responded here. Um, nope. I don't think so. Let's see here. I'm just... Oh, maybe it's a capital. Wow, that's really sensitive. Oh, I'm posting. Oh, I've got it in the wrong section there. Sorry, guys. Give me one second here. I wanted to see if, okay. Um, oh, Shion says it worked at the source. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it would have been fun to see you there, my friend. But um, yeah, up there in Dawson Creek when I was up there. But we didn't have a need to go into the source. So very cool. I love it. I love it when people who are watching the lives are where I am because I'm in Lethbridge, Alberta. That's where I'm located, but I'm always traveling. All right, let's see what's next here. Uh, we'll jump down to the next question as I'm scrolling through. I, I, I love this one from Neutral. That's a miracle. And what they're talking about miracle is the three-month processing time on a CEC-based BC PNP for an individual working in BC. Prince uh, Prince George actually is where he's working, um, who uh, was qualified through the international graduate stream. Okay. All right, let's see here. Okay. Um, Oeng says, hey, Mark, ONP International Student Stream requires job offers. Does this job offer mean that it has to be a positive LMA? Thank you. Employers have to demonstrate that there is, um, that there's a need for that position. And so does it specifically require that the employer has an LMIA? No, but when, because by the very nature of the program, right, international students are on post-grad work permits. Um, but the, the job offer, there's a lot of requirements associated with it. And I recommend that you book a consult and we can dive into that deeply. Uh, but, you know, most international students are not on LMIA supported um, positions. Okay. Um, all right, let's see what's next here. Okay, Leah, do you need to provide T4? Okay, got to that one. Okay, uh, Masabin says, I studied in a country for three years and I visited that country on a visitor pass for two weeks to get a police clearance certificate. Do I need another PCC to cover up until my two weeks of visit? Now it covers up until a week, yeah. So this is how I approach it. So, and I talk about this a lot. I don't take any chances. If you were in the country when it was issued, then I only consider that police clearance certificate being valid for six months. If it's beyond six months, then I request, I recommend people get a new one. I've seen so many refusals, even though immigration says, hey, if you're only going back for a week or two, we don't worry about it. If your police certificate, you know, if it was issued, um, you know, we don't disqualify it. That's what I've said. That's what I've heard that, you know, the head officials say, if you go back for a holiday for a week, we don't require a new police certificate. I don't trust them. I do not trust them. I always will get a new police clearance certificate if I can, if it's older than six months and I have been back to that country um, since it was originally issued or I was in the country when it was issued. All right. Okay. Um, let's see what's next here. Uh, okay, we've got Bellin. Bellin says, hey, Mark, uh, express entry federal skilled workers taking longer than provincial nominee or or is just new permanent residents that starts this July that are moving quickly? What do you think? It depends on the country. It really does. I've had some clients who are just now finalizing their, their PR for China. So they went through just a horribly lengthy period of time. And, um, and so finally they're getting their landing take, you know, they've got their, their COPER and, uh, the PRVs in the passport, but yeah, they've been waiting such a long time. And, uh, yeah, so it really depends on overseas visa offices and, and how the application is being processed. Um, yeah, but it's, it's all over the map. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Tatiana says, hey, Mark, what documents do I need to submit as proof that my sibling lives in Canada as a permanent resident? Thank you. Okay, well, Tatiana, let me show you. This is a great resource. And those of you who are do express entry and not aware of it, I cover this once again extensively in my course. In the course, I will I share a link called the IRCC uh, completeness check. And so this link right here will take you to, um, I just search sibling. Uh, actually, let's see here. Uh, family. I'm going to scroll down here till I get to the section. Okay, so 
this is if you're trying to claim for a brother or sister who's a Canadian citizen or permanent resident, you can see a copy of both sides of that person's Canadian citizenship or PR card, evidence that the person lives in Canada, which is a utility bill, mortgage document, and proof that they're actually your sibling. So birth certificate or some other official document showing that you have the same parents or at least one parent. So that is, uh, that's how you do it, Tatiana. And um, I'm assuming in the, in the, this is in the context of, um, of express entry is probably the direction that you're referring to. Okay, Aboud says, regarding the medical exam, if someone here in Canada and you didn't do the medical exam before, will be exempt or he, she needs to do one? Do one. Do the medical. Everybody needs to have one done at some point in time. It's just those who did it before that don't. Okay, um, Chaudhry says, what is security check and timeline, which is last check before passport request for Outlander? It, it varies. I can't, anytime you guys ask about processing times, it varies depending upon the countries. Canada has really good relationships with some countries, others not so much. And so it takes a um, longer time uh, for, you know, say to get one from Iran versus from the US, right? So that's pretty much the, you know, what you're looking at. So timelines, I can't really tell. And um, yeah, in terms of how long it takes before the passport request um, for someone outside of Canada, it just varies, my friend. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Va says, one of the naughty issues that prospective immigrants face is in which is which province to settle in. Which would you say score highest in affordability, job opportunities, family time, low crime rates? <laughs> Maybe I should do a video on that, right? Best provinces to move to in Canada. Well, I would tell you Alberta every single time. But for the purposes of expanding your options and likelihood of getting permanent residence, well, which provinces have the most options? Well, is it Ontario? No. With 49% of all international students headed to Ontario schools, Ontario is not the place that you want to go. British Columbia? Well, same story. A ton of people there, super competitive for those spots. So if purely I was looking, and you guys, if you haven't watched the video, I've actually been quite impressed with, with, the, um, with the results of our, um, I'll just show you here. So we can bump down. Let's see if I can find it. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it's this one here. So if you haven't watched this one yet, it's actually got pretty good, pretty good views. So we've got 29,000 people that have watched it. So we changed this up and in here I talk about my top six takeaways from the minister's report. And uh, and in there at the very end, the last section, let's see if I can find it here, I talk about that exact topic. So, you know, looking at the Atlantic provinces. And the reason that I bring that up is because in the Atlantic provinces, you guys, you have multiple options. So for those provinces, Newfoundland, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, which I was there this year, beautiful place, and Nova Scotia, there's the Atlantic Immigration Program. So there's option one. Then you have PNP programs in each of those provinces. So there's option two. Some of them have rural and northern immigration. Option three. And of course, they're all eligible for express entry. So if I was keeping my options open, these locations are are pretty good to consider. So if you haven't watched that video, head over to uh, yeah, head over to our, our our site and and watch that sucker because um, apparently people liked it. I guess you guys like explainer videos. If you watch if you watch that video, did you like it? Give me a thumbs up. I'd love to I'd love to hear um, yeah if that if that video that I did here was one that you guys um, felt was useful. And uh, just to remind everybody. This is the September 20th announcement from Minister Fraser um, and the takeaways. So there you go. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. Okay, and like it and share it and all those kinds of things. Uh, it'd be kind of fun to have it hit uh, 30,000. Let's see, what are we at right now? I'm curious. We're at, it says 29,000. I don't know exactly how close that is. Anyways, it'd be fun to push it over the 30,000 um, mark. That'd be kind of cool. It's, uh, let's see, which one is it? It's right, yeah, it's this one. TR to PR top six takeaway. So I'd love to see that hit 30,000. So if you haven't watched it, go watch it. It's a short video. It's the very, very most important things that you could think about when it, you know, making decisions about what you're asking, Va. Okay, 
Okay, I see some thumbs up. I see some thumbs going up. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Leah, you're very welcome. Okay, Alva says, if I had an express entry account without ITA back in 2018, and now I want to apply for a study permit, please an idea how to explain it on the letter of intention. Thank you. Well, when you're talking about permanent residence, you basically want to outline, sorry, when you're talking about applying for a study permit, it all comes down to your education plan. And so some people, yeah, you maybe had a profile back in 2018, but you need to show a clear pathway from the education you're taking in Canada back to improved job prospects in your home country. That's what it's all about, you guys. So Alva, that's, you know, that's how you approach it. Really, really strengthen that education plan. <clears throat> Once again, I think sometimes you guys forget, you know, this is what we do. This is our bread and butter. Study permits, work permits, permanent residence, appeals, judicial reviews, reconsideration requests, problems with admissibility, all of that stuff we do within our firm. And you can hire us to help you. And Alva, we can help you navigate your way through that. So once again, consider sliding over right over here to our site and booking a consult with one of the lawyers here. And the link is right below. So check that out. All right, let's keep zipping through here. I'm going to take a quick peek at my calendar because today was a super busy day. Let's see. Okay, yeah, I've got a little bit of a break. Then I've got another consult. Then I've got a full review. Then I've got a meeting with my business coach. And today I started off with two consults, then a meeting with our... Uh, um, with uh, an SEO optimizer, which ugh, I'm losing faith in those guys. Uh, anyways, I'll leave it at that. Okay. Um, okay. Bellin says, what if I can't get a letter from an, an ex-employer that specifies duties and responsibilities? That, guess what happens, Bellin? I strongly encourage you to slide right over here and subscribe to the Express Entry course that starts. Why? Because within the course, if I click on here, go to my library... You guys can see all the previous courses, everything that we've got going on here. And I click view the product and then I click on here and I go down to module six, which is awesome. And how many individual lessons? 57, you guys. So mastering your documents here and I scroll down and look at what I have here, records of employment. And then from records of employment, there's a over 23 minute video talking about all of the ins and outs of it. But what do I have here on my list? What if I can't get a reference letter right there? And in here, I have a bunch of ideas on how to provide alternative evidence, alternative, and this is just a download, just like all of these. How many sample reference letters? 30. You know, we've got a ton of information in here. But in your situation, Bellin, when you have an employer that's not cooperative, you need to find other alternative sources for those duties and responsibilities. And uh, in some cases, maybe you have a supervisor or another uh, colleague or someone in the business that's higher up that can sign off or swear an affidavit for you that they, you know, that these are your duties. I like to include even emails if I can from the employer saying, hey, we don't provide duties. Maybe you have your original job offer that had duties. Maybe they posted for the position online and you can put the duties that have been posted out in the public domain. So those are just some of the ideas, Bellin. But I strongly encourage you to slide over and, and join me in my next uh, Express Entry Masterclass because we cover all of that stuff in detail and the video goes in a whole lot more detail and the, um, the resources and tools that are there are designed to help you uh, brainstorm and think of other ways that you could potentially, um, you know, compensate for the fact your employer is a jerk and isn't giving you what you need, Okay. All right, we got 10 minutes left here. We're just about through. Okay, uh, Nabil says, for the travel history, do we have to scan the passport where the visa stamps are? In the instructions, it says your current passport. That's all you have to provide is your current passport with all the stamp pages, okay? That's what it says in the instructions, in the EAPR, in your personal document checklist. So that's what I recommend you do. Okay, um, Let's see what's next. Uh, Prabhu, hello to you. Good to see you. Sebastian says, are the processing times for study permits by the direct stream still 20 days or might it increase due to the overload of requests? It's always overloading. You know, 20 days is like a fantasy. Sometimes it happens, but I'll be honest, the ones that are getting processed in 20 days are often the ones that are just getting refused because of the stupid advanced analytics. Anyways, all right. Um, Okay, so Rashmi says, do people with notif notifications of interest also make changes to their profile as per the tier system in November? If it rolls over and changes need to be made, that's not a problem. It's not going to be a problem at all. It won't, Rashmi. 
Okay, um, Ross says, will there be the possibility for D, light duty cleaner, to be eligible for express entry, especially here in Ontario? Go to our website, you guys. Go to our website. Okay, let's flip back and I'm going to show you. We have tons of resources and tools. Right at the top, under resources, is our blog. So when we click on the blog and then we type tier right here, you will see that Cedric and Chanel drafted an awesome blog post on this topic. That is called the New Occupation Eligibility Knock 2021. And in here, they have their list of winners and losers. So winners are uh, occupations that will become eligible. And the losers are occupations that will become ineligible. And really, there's only a few. So when you look at the list um, here, we've got a, kind of a, a high-level overview um, and I have to assume, though, in your situation, that a light duty cleaner is probably not going to make the cut. So, Ross, I think that's probably unlikely just because the skill level for that is 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 quite low. And uh, so it would not surprise me in any way if, um, if, if that light duty cleaner didn't make the cut. But let's face it, Minister Fraser can do whatever he wants going forward. Okay, um, let's see what's next here. Uh, Nabil says, how much time does it take for CSQ from Quebec? That I can't answer. I can't answer that one. Salma, can we get points in CRS for research assistant and teaching assistant during PhD studies in Canada? Um, no, like this is the thing that drives me crazy because immigration has put out some, um, some suggestions and I shouldn't say no, just quickly, quickly. But the reality is there's no such thing as just work experience. It's either Canadian or foreign work experience. And I had a consult with an individual just the other day and we talked about um, a representative from IRCC who came to a school and said that you can claim points while you're studying for federal skilled worker program. Well, that is true, but not while you're in Canada. And, uh, and that's, the, that's the problem. While you're employed full time, that work experience is not eligible for the Canadian experience class. And, um, and when it comes to foreign work experience, well, it's not foreign work experience. It's work that was gained in Canada. So that's the dilemma. And lots of people dance around that. And I've never had IRCC come back and say, yes, it works. Never have I had them. So, you know, and I'm sure, uh, Salma, that maybe someone out there has actually applied and, and tried that and even potentially being accepted. But, but it's not something I ever, ever advise clients to rely upon. Okay, um, Jack says, hey, Mark, thanks for the continuous help you provide. Uh, uh, is it a problem if a sibling lives in Quebec? Can I still claim the additional 15 points? Yeah, doesn't matter. Okay, Chico says, Chico says, it's okay in BC PMP Tech if I have a job offer, but I work remotely from Toronto because I'm studying. Eh, I don't know. I do not like that at all. Um, BC is going to have huge issues if, if you're not physically living in BC. There might be some circumstances, you know, and I recommend once again that you consider booking a consult and, and with the firm, click on the link below and you can uh, and you can click on the link that will take you to book a consult. We can talk about that at length, but you have to be very, very careful. Um, most prov provinces, if you're actually studying or you have a connection to another province, um, it's going to be really tough to get that nomination. Okay, Dinesh says, hey, sir, my knock is not matching with my job title. Well, it's not the end of the world. How off is it? Are, is your job title astrophysicist or rocket scientist and your duties are that of a food service supervisor? Well, yeah, that's an issue. But titles, um, it's the duties that they really respond and that, that becomes the issue. And I do a lot of consults with people, Dinesh, who are specifically looking for help to select their proper knock. So book a consult, click on the link. Okay, uh, let's see here. Okay, Jake says, hey, Mark, I... I've, uh, I'll get an ITA today. Well, great. Okay. And completed my one year experience yesterday, October 11th. I took a paid vacation outside of Canada for about 45 days. That's a long time for a paid vacation in total. Would it be safer to decline and wait until October 26th? Yes, it would be safer. In every case, it would be safer. Um, because if you have not met it, technically paid vacations can be counted and included uh, 45 days depends on the job, depends upon the circumstances. Sometimes teachers have the summers off. So maybe 45 days is not a big deal if you're a teacher, for example. But in generally speaking, that's a long time because usually immigration references two to three weeks of vacation. Wow, I could only imagine 45 days. <laughs> I've never had that long as a paid vacation. That's awesome. 
Okay, Kent says, my wife is getting the study permit and I will take the open work permit. What can I do as an open work permit to make fastest way to get PR? It depends on where you're going. <phone rings> Book a consult, Kent. Let's take a look at it and we can explore what those options might be. Um, okay, uh, Arash Preet says, does customer service representative jobs come under the new tier program? I have one and a half years of Canadian experience. Customer service representatives, low wage, low skill. If you look back at our list here that I was sharing you, you can see customer service support is not typically something that is going to get elevated. As a skill level C, you can see payroll administrators, dental assistants, nurses, aides, pharmacy techs, uh, elementary teachers, sheriffs, bailiffs, correctional, aesthetics, residential installers, pest control, other repairs, truck drivers, bus drivers, heavy equipment, and aircraft. I don't think they're going to elevate it because there's a gazillion people that are working those positions. You need to be a supervisor, my friend. Okay. Um, Okay, here's another one, Michael. Book a consult, you guys. Just completed my one-year Canadian experience and my Cirrus now is 465. What do you suggest, Mark? I'm now um, on a closed work permit. Well, Michael, where do you live? What, what province? You know, do you have family here? You know, what is your, you got 465 points, but you know, what does, and you've got your one-year Canadian experience, which, you know, makes you eligible for CEC, but you know, how old are you? What was your language score? So there's so many things that we can, we can canvas, but I recommend you book a consult. Then I can give you advice now. You can start making plans and then you're not going down a path burning up your postgrad. Guys, that's the worst thing in the world for me. I'll be honest. I've spent so long advising people when it's too late. So people will book a consult when their work permit's just about expired, their postgrad. They've got this work experience for this employer. They're not sure if it counts. Why in the world would you work for a year, burn up that year on your postgrad, and then book a consult with me? Book it now. We can strategize. I can tell you if you're on the right path. And the goal is to give you as many options as possible going forward. That's what we do. All right. Let's go to our next end. We're just about wrapped up here, guys. We're just going to wrap it up here. Let's see if I have any more supers. I don't want to miss them. Um, okay. Rashmi says, birth certificate needed during the EAPR. Um, not if you're the principal applicant or a spouse. Birth certificates are only required if you're claiming a sibling in Canada to prove that they're actually your sibling and points for them, or you have a dependent child and you're trying to establish that they're your child based on the birth certificate. So that's that one, uh, Reshmi. <clears throat> okay, uh, I think we're just about ready to wrap up here. 10.59. Um, duh, 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 duh. Let's see what we have here. Uh, okay, Adele says, Dear Mark, may we have your advice on which one is secure, easy, and fast process, either study or work permit? Adele, this is this is really a triangle question. Work permits, when you have a uh, an LMIA-based work permit, well, you're going to have a greater success of that being approved than a study permit. A study permit, like I talked about in the video that I just did here, if you have not watched it, you guys get over there and watch this because my sixth takeaway addresses international students and study permits and really why you should avoid going to Ontario and BC and go to a, a more rural location. But even for work, rural locations are better than large centers. And, um, you know, work permits and things like that, if you've got an LMIA base, you know, LMIA supporting it, you're going to have a greater chance than just a study permit where you're competing with hundreds of thousands of people looking to come to Canada. So, but a consult is where that works out. And just to reiterate, and I will never make excuses for this because you guys book consults with me anyways. And I would by far rather you connected in now and booked with one of the awesome lawyers that we have in the firm. Alicia's in Calgary. Chanel's in Toronto. Cedric is in Ottawa. He also gallivants around the world. So you could get them anywhere. And, uh, and I'm in Lethbridge. Okay. So from a geographic location, that's how we're situated. Okay. But for what we do, our whole firm is virtual. We can help people anywhere you are in the world. Okay, um, let's see what's next. We'll hit one last one. Um, let's see. I'm trying to get a general one because lots of you guys are answering specific questions. And if you don't get your question answered, we'll be back tomorrow at 11 a.m. But also remember, if it's really specific, book a consult. Also, the courses, remember, on the... 24th and don't wait like don't wait until the 24th because I want you to go in and access all the material store up your questions and then when I do my live sessions with just people who subscribed then we can dive deep into the questions that you have 
But next week on Monday, October the 17th from 4 to 5 p.m., we're going to be doing the spousal sponsorship course. So if you're looking to sponsor a spouse or know of someone that wants to sponsor, make sure that they head over and subscribe and join me because the master classes is where you get direct one-to-one interaction with me. All right. Okay. Let's um, let's see what else we have here. Uh, oh, Ali. Let's finish off with Ali. It says thanks, thanks, Mark. Just receive a coper. Your videos were really helpful and hope in darkness covid awesome i love that one. i'm giving you an applause and bellin you're very very welcome okay all right we're gonna wrap that one up guys i don't think we have any more supers um let's see Rashmi says is there a pause and draws in november possible no i don't see a pause happening i don't you're very welcome adele and uh yeah i think that covers everything so thanks so much guys i appreciate you tuning in it was another great live q a as always remember we have coming up on for those express entry characters on the um uh, that match class october the 24th to the 27th is when we're going to be doing that for express entry but you can go subscribe and join now and so i think we've got it uh all right so i'll just jump back here and reshmi i already answered your question (laughs) so (laughs) which was no pause i think i got them all okay thanks so much guys take care we'll see you tomorrow at 11 and watch because I'm going to have a client join me who got their express entry approved in three months. Woo! Times are improving. Take care, everybody.